Dudes, how you doing? We are back the next day. Look at that. That wasn't that long of a wait. Um, it's 11 o'clock right now. We are setting up to do this beautiful Kona N. Uh, this was driven over from New York, um, but he got it. Got it there. Lives here. <laughs> so yeah, didn't actually come as far. Um, well, made a long trip here. Anyways, uh, we're going to be doing ceramic on the whole thing. So the point is that you actually have to go really far to get your cars right now. But we are going to be doing 50% on the full windshield. We're going to do 20% on the front doors. And the back doors are already privacy glass. So we're going to do a 50% on top of that. So it's going to be full ceramic dealy. Um, let's get set up here. We got a fair amount of work. This isn't going to be quite as uh, intense as the Audi A4 yesterday, thankfully. Um, there's quite a few things on this that is going to be pretty straightforward, except for the, I mean, really, like, the back window is kind of weird, and we'll go over that. Um, but if you have a plotter, you're going to be uh, very happy about that, too. So I think I got to move my headset. Should work. Why is it not working? Try that. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. No, it's connected to the right thing. Anyways. Brandon Claft, what's up? How you guys doing? You guys ready for some for some tint? Let's get this camera set up. We have charged batteries. I just can't believe how many times. Like there's so many little things that actually need to happen for every stream. So making sure everything's plugged in um, before I leave sounds easy enough, but it's actually kind of annoyingly complicated because there's the battery for this, there's the batteries for this, multiple batteries will die, there's also a battery on the receiver and the transmitter of the microphone, those need to be charged and inevitably something gets missed because there is a lot on, um, there's just a lot. All right, let's turn this back down. Where's the volume? It doesn't even tell me. It's just like, all right. So there's that. I'm glad I found your channel. Uh, it's been fun watching and relaxing. Thank you. I appreciate that a lot. There we go. Headphone volume's good. I don't see a meter for it, though. I don't know where that went. Supreme coming to what's up? I miss you doing back-to-back -back streams. <laughs> well, it still happens. It gets tough, though, because, I mean, legitimately, they take, uh, they take longer. So I have to, I've, I've kind of come to terms with, I have to set up special days to do them. Um, because if every day was like yesterday, it just wouldn't, it just wouldn't happen as much. And then the videos have been doing really well, too. So I have to try and make schedule for videos as well, which I'd love to do on, on this car, but I don't know what to do. I run out of ideas. All right, let's see. So this is all good? This is good. Microphone, see? Microphone is that last thing. I have to plug in the transmitter and the receiver, but I can't use that charging cable because that charging cable has a hum to it. When is it party? Now it's party. As soon as I get this, as soon as I get this all done. So many things. Is it good? We good? Shank. Oh yeah, we good. 
All right, so we are gonna do the Kona. Uh, we got quite a bit of work ahead. Um, we got, cause we're doing full windshield. So we have all the prep work on this. And this is very reminiscent of the, uh, of the Honda Type R. I was telling the, uh, the client this too. It's just the way that it's styled. I mean, it's definitely different, but it's that same type of sporty. And, but if we look at the, the spoiler back here, so we've done a lot of hatches lately, and it's all the way up here is where the dots are, just a little bit shy, and then there's this kind of goofy cutout, and then just a lot in the way here. So if somebody's gotta remove a spoiler for this one, I wouldn't blame them, but if we look on the inside, there's a lot of room to actually work with on here. So shrinking it, I think it's smarter to just not shrink most of this on the car because of how much gets in the way. If I could shrink it on the inside, I would. Um, but I think we're just gonna plotter it, snap it on the glass board, and then carry it over to the inside. Otherwise, you kinda have some room that you could kind of like move the tin around and, and handle, um, you know, shrinking some extra stuff down here. But like, there's not a lot to shrink on something like this, so that makes it a lot easier. But it's still, it's, it's got some hardware challenges to it. You look at that and you're like, oh God. Okay, um, my tape, I need tape roll. Let's start <sighs> taping things off. Watch the windshield video you posted yesterday. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, the video actually is doing really well, which is amazing to see. Um, I filmed that in the morning. That was the Explorer that I ended up doing. So that was a full windshield and full windshield and ceramic, and then front doors and ceramic too. I just didn't do it on stream. I decided to go for the Audi. So I've got a back window, the back window video that I'm working on for the Audi. Um, good footage, not entirely sure what to say for it other than another shrinking video. And then for this one, I don't know, I'd like to do something, but I don't have any immediate ideas. It gets tough. happening two days in a row you guys there was like a whole week I, I stream like every day in a row it's not that crazy is it it's just been a minute I don't know, I think what's gonna have to happen is like two to three days a week, I'm gonna have to set aside to do a live stream. And then the rest of the week, we'll just, there'll be a few more cars piled into a day. Um, but I, I might, it's to the point now where I think I have to ask people if they want their, if their cars streamed or not. Because, you know, like early on, nobody really knew that I was streaming. So it wasn't a big deal whether I streamed it or not. It was just kind of like, oh, that was cool. Now I think people, people are still pretty understanding. But, you know, a lot of people that find the studio from the channel, especially when you bring something like this in, you know, I'm sure it's nice to have on the channel too. So... Oops. It would be easier to do videos of everything though. But I just didn't realize how I could do videos of everything. Now I kind of figured it out.
Could do another ceramic windshield video. <laughs> that, that to me is a little crazy that, oh wow, another ceramic windshield video. Because <laughs> I've just posted so many of them lately. It's great. It's great to have for the business. It's just funny when that becomes repetitive. Like, damn, that usually is a, uh, a bigger deal than that. So I got a red dot back. I'm very happy I, I've, I managed to find one. I figured I had some laying around here somewhere. I just had to dig deep. I had to dig deep to find it, but I found one, thankfully. It's a better knife in more ways than I actually gave it credit for. I thought it was the clicks. It's a little bit more than that. I also hooked up the uh, the cone sprayers on my tint keg, just because. There we go. That's all set. Set this somewhere where we can find it again. Take a sip of coffee, and then we'll uh, we'll get started here. You gotta make that money. Yep, things cost money. Gotta make money, pay for them all. <laughs> it's just. <sighs> all right. Actually, before we do the doors, let's, let's cut out the uh, let's cut out the windshield here. throw some stuff over here so we're gonna we're gonna jump up on this windshield so the windshield it's got the the cutout that we're all kind of used to see seeing at this point so nothing crazy um, reasonable amount of space around everything I'm gonna make sure that this glue is taken care of I'm glad I saw that um, there's always like there's always gonna be something on a windshield and and that's an interesting place to find something so i'm glad i saw that um but down towards the bottom the deck lid pinches a little tight uh as far as like trying to get a soak shield in here but towels should be totally fine and everything and then it's got a nice ceramic border around the entire thing so that's good um we're definitely not going to do anything to move the mirror um off like try and disassemble this and and take the mirror off it's probably you know what it's probably very doable but because there's so much housing here i'm just gonna kind of like we're already gonna have a big cutout so i'm just gonna kind of leave things as is I never like to mess with the systems if I don't have to, especially when it gets to a windshield I'm not ultra familiar with. So Hyundai would be on the, probably the easier range of disassembly. Like as far as I could tell, that cover probably just pops up and there's a screw and probably takes the mirror off, no problem. But still a little bit of a gamble whenever you're getting into stuff like that without actually knowing. So let's not do that right now. But let's go ahead and clean this uh, clean this windshield off. Never really realized how much longer the cone tips are than the flat ones. <laughs> that's turned up. No, nope, it's still turned up. There we go. So I don't know. I've never used the fan tips for a long time and then went back to, to using a cone tip. So, I don't know, we'll find out. We'll find out if I'm just like, whoa, I wanna go back. We'll see. I would go back. <laughs> but 
but I grew up on them. So, hmm, we don't really need to raise the wipers either. But we might. go. Let's go ahead and tape it. 10 years for me. Don't think I'll look back unless I broke one. <laughs> it's a long time with it. I mean, that's as long as I've been using the cone tips, actually longer than that. God, it's weird. Doesn't feel like, doesn't feel like I've been tinting for 15 years. come back for that center bit. Chat's a little quiet today. A little bit. That's what happens when we stream two days in a row. <laughs> See, people say they like streams multiple days in a row. But what does the crowd think? It's actually more exciting when you space it apart farther. <laughs> Yes. You have to make it up in hours. That's what I had to do for aviation mechanics school. That was fun. So you had, you the FAA requires you to be to be a mechanic, you have to attend school for so many hours. So there was a lot of like filler time. Teachers would play movies and whatnot. Just to, like fill time because they didn't have enough material. But if you missed the hours, you actually had to pay per hour in after school <laughs> to make up for it. Oh, that was super obnoxious. Wish I had straight edges like those. They're actually really small dot matrix border on this one too. So it's not um, just hard to see unless I get close to it, but there's still dots on this one too. I don't think they're laminated either. Most windshields will have some small dot border. It's, I think it's typically like Honda is like one of the few that actually just puts like a straight line on, on some of their cars, not all of them though. At least on the windshield. All right, so that's gonna dry. Now, as for the back window, I think we're just gonna leave it alone. Um, we're gonna plot everything out and then I think we're just gonna snap shrink it on the board. We may shrink just the bottom. I'm not sure, but there really doesn't look to be much that needs to be even done back here. So for the most part, 
we're going to leave end up leaving that back window alone. So that's nice. So let's roll these windows back up. Let's get some 20% for the front. Let's get going. Ooh, that was magical. One more. Turn that off. And then... Good. Things are going good. Staying busy. Tis the season. Phones have been a little slow. That always worries me, but it's been pretty gray out. So like I, I've been building up a, a nice buffer and then I'm, I'm always happy to see it. And then I notice the phone slow down and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> Seems like it's like this ever building buffer and then you get really close to the end of it and then it fills back up again like really, really quickly. So tint businesses, It's always like feast or famine, up and down, up and down. Is there somewhere local I can buy the scrub pads? Uh, actually, so you can't get Tri-Edge locally, but these ones, um, these are the ones I would recommend. Get scotch Brite non-scratch, those you can find locally. Places like I think like Walmart or Target. Target is where I got those, I know that much. Whoa, they put all the stickers on the back. That's different. Are you advertising? Most of it is through just what I do off of the channel and existing on maps with like some nice reviews. I mean, I saw a pretty hefty, I see a, a pretty hefty amount of business that just comes through phone calls off of maps. They see reviews and they end up booking. So that's, uh, that's honestly like a, a big part of it, just being nicely discoverable. And then you'll get referrals from from other clients that you that you've done work for, and you know they'll have friends and family. So I don't know. I, I mean, it's helpful to do advertising, but all the all the Facebook stuff, or like you know, general Facebook advertising was always way more of a pain for me. I tried it, got a lot of inquiries, and then lots and lots of questions and very few of those people actually book, so just got annoying. So I should post more on, uh, on Google My Business. I always say that and then I forget to. TikTok and Instagram Reels. Yeah, we have a TikTok too. Somebody called me and said they were from, they found me on TikTok. So that works too, for sure. TikTok is actually like really, I don't think it's underrated, but I don't think tint shops, well, actually, no, that's not true. I think people, I think it might be, most people might think it's more for fun, and it, and it kind of is. But you can do, you can definitely pull business in off of it. I mean, we saw a giant wave of people asking about ceramic tint because of that like meme video. Dark on the outside, light on the inside. And then um, I saw some people do that with like a number of other things. <laughs> it was cool. I mean, I saw, what, who was it? 
Texas Tint Masters, they did one for Architectural that blew up. They got a ton of leads off of it. So all that stuff, it, it's cool. It's just another way to get discovered. And with, uh, with marketing, that's what it's all about, is like it doesn't matter how people find you, just that they find you. The important thing is just to be doing something and then look at the results that you get from it. Like if it seems like it's just not doing much, it's either on the wrong platform or you gotta change it up. There's a lot of people doing the exact same thing. You always gotta try and change up the creative because people get used to seeing it. Okay, so we'll pull this down a little farther. So I, I don't have a great reason for why I put the cone tips back on. I was in the middle of cleaning out, cleaning out the filter, um, and then I'm like, I got the cone tips sitting here, and I keep getting asked about them, so I just decided to swap them for today. Just give it a try. Do you have an IT guy? No. No, but there's this. So there's this company that contacted me. Um, was actually interested in doing um, some advertising, but instead, I think I might just, like they build super nice websites. And I think the shift, like this happened at really no point in time, but you really have to gear your website as being a resource on top of also being a business website. Those are the ones that are really gonna get found and, and lots of business, like things that are very professionally put together, but also deliver some good information on what, what clients are looking for. That's what really builds a good website right now. And they have that down to what looked like a science. So I gotta set up a meeting with them. What kind of blade holder is that? That is a cheap plastic one. <laughs> I was actually, so yesterday I was playing around with the um, the Ulfa one. And it was terrible. But a plastic holder, I don't know, I like, When you use a plastic one, you can hold it against the top of the glass a little bit more snugly because it's plastic. Where with um, the red dot, you can create a little groove if you're not careful. So I was just actually happily surprised with the way that I did the top edge with this. So I figured I'd just try it again today. But both of them are good. Hello, Tin Studio, how can I help you? Sure, uh, did you want to do the full windshield with that? No, so just all the sides in the rear? Okay, so it depends on the film grade that you want to go with, but starting that car would be 290. Mm-hmm. No problem, have a good one. Whenever people, the first thing out of their mouth is how much I just deflate a little bit. <laughs> 
Because they're like, they seem like, they are, he already seemed like he was in a hurry. So how much to tint this? Too much. Okay, have a good one. I'm not trying to convince people. Is that? Do you use carbon blades for the top edge? Yeah, so I actually have a thin carbon blade in this blade holder right now. I, I didn't notice, I didn't notice a huge difference with just carbon blades, but what I did notice was when I switched, or when I started using the, the thin carbon ones or the 30 degree carbon blades. But I don't notice the difference really between the orange side and the blue side of the hybrid, so your mileage will vary depending on, on what you use. You might notice more of a difference. So it's always nice to just kind of try some different things. But for me, the, uh, the, the ultra thin uh, carbon blades, they're really, really sharp. Straighten that out. Just left it a little short. I feel like this still is not perfect. And then there's that. Yeah, yeah, that should be good. Everything good. How many clicks for the top edge? Uh, about three. I actually didn't know. And then we tried it during the class because they had that same question. So it's like from the top, one, two, three, about that much. So I'm about a blade and a half out. Gives me like a little bit of wiggle room. So if I had a ultra steady hand, I could probably get by with just doing that, but sometimes the blade will slip off. So. You can actually put more blade out, but you still have your sides to worry about. So if you do like this much blade, for most of it you'd be fine, but then you start running into the, the side seals and stuff. So about three clicks out. I'm about three clicks out. So we need, that's 20, so we need 50 for the back. Not plotter cutting. We're gonna do it on the back window today. How's the workhorse? Is it worth for tint and PPF? I haven't used it for PPF. I'd imagine uh, it, it's totally fine for PPF though. Um, for window tint, it's good. Yeah, for window tint, you can dial it in and you can get some really clean cuts off of it. It's been totally fine for doing window tint on it. PPF, like I always say this with plotter systems anyways, like the workhorse systems are a more budget way to get into using a plotter. Um, and I think they're good enough. Depends on, like I, I, like I said, I haven't used it for PPF. Um, so one of the issues that I even had with using a graph tech was like our rollers weren't going completely straight on, on even, a, even on the graph tech. And I had so many people look at it, even people that cut out PPF regularly on plotters, like our film rep came out and he looked at the plotter and he couldn't figure it out either at the time. 
So PPF is a thick animal to cut out. So I would recommend getting a little bit more robust of a machine maybe, but Plotter Depot has a ton of plotter options. The workhorse will, will get you by though. There's somebody that asked about the website company. I'm gonna try and, I'll bring it up on stream. I actually might just schedule a live stream with them because I gotta schedule a meeting and it was one of those things where like, they were interested in advertising. Um, so we, we had a phone call, but I was honestly just really, really impressed with the way that they do their websites. I don't know if there's anything will be able to work out, but I always like to, like it'd be a really interesting thing to uh, to pull up on stream because web design is a uh, is an important thing. I forget their name though offhand. Something about detailing. But they're doing Chicago Auto Pro's website too. It's like a hundred and something a month. So honestly, um, totally reasonable. <laughs> for It's one of those things that, you know, you pull a client off of it a month at minimum and it would pay for itself. It's, it's like, a, it, it's basically like another one of those types of things. That, that's the way I would look at the pricing. Um, but that being said, you know, you can build a templated thing and keep it running for dirt cheap. So there's no excuse to have a bad website now, but a more polished one with all the right types of information. It's very important. Cheaper than a phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, advertising, you're going to be spending way more than that per month. But you know, it's in perpetuity, so. There's like, I go, I go back and forth on that stuff a little bit. So I always like to have keys and, and, uh, and control over my web presence. And I had a website built like a long time ago uh, for, for like kits. But they they keep all the files and stuff, so it's kind of like you you rented it. So when you go with like custom stuff, there's pros and cons to it because I'm sure you could maybe tweak some stuff. But at the end of the day, if you wanted to like move hosting or something, that's that's I, I would doubt you could do something like that. But then again, why would you if they do a good job? So. Phone book ads. I don't think people do phone book ads anymore, do they? <laughs> I didn't even, why did they come up? Oh yeah, we were talking about a little bit of advertising. This was like weeks ago. So I still got to do something about it.
<laughs> haven't seen a uh, phone book in a while, probably holding up monitors in offices. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Hang on. they're not efficient they take up too much time nobody wants to dig through a index they just when you can search convenience Yeah, they like the <laughs> Yeah, I don't think anybody really does yellow pages anymore. It's a nice to have thing. Maybe. I don't know. It's like a magazine. There's still some type of an audience somewhere for it. A lot of those things run off of uh like just the fact that they've existed for so long and companies are so slow to adopt new advertising methods. So like some old big company will happily probably throw thousands of dollars in advertising in the yellow pages still. DC Customs and Detailing Super Chatted $5. I've been using the Jicket for plotting and it has been working great for me. Also using Vivo B1350 took me a while to set up, but now working great. DC! DC, thank you for the five. Been using DigiCut for plotting. It's been working great for me. Also using a ver... Vivo B1350 took me a while to set up, but now it's working great. Thanks for the info, man. I appreciate it. I don't know what that one is. It's interesting to, s I I'm assuming it's more of a budget plotter. Oh, there's another one. Daniel Reyna. Daniel Reyna super chatted $9.99. Good morning, Master Kuya. Kona in Hawaiian <laughs> means dry side of the island. Also, Kona coffee is grown in this district. In the Old Norse, it means wife or woman. <laughs> Daniel Reyna, thank you so much for the 10. And the fun facts today. Absolutely. Appreciate it, man dry side of the island. Well, this one, we're going to get a little wet. Another one. RGC super chat at five dollars. How are you shrinking the box? Oh, there we go. Thank you. This is for everybody that super chatted so far. Woo! Thank you very much. I appreciate it a lot. I don't know why it was not working though. It says it's connected. I haven't updated the software in quite a long time. RGC with the five. How are you shrinking the bottoms? Ah, sh we just finished. <laughs> Damn it. Um, so when I'm setting up the bottom for snap shrinking, I can't 
go through and shrink them right now because they're already shrunk, but I can show you how I set them up and everything. Um, and this is actually, th this is the lesson that I had at the class. Um, this is set up just like the blazer would be. So I try and put as much film on the glass as I can, but we cut this out so it's bigger than the, than, than the frame of the window. So I set it up where there's a little gap here and a little gap at the bottom. Hey, now it's working. <laughs> Daniel Rain a super chatted $9.99. I like your stool. Where did you buy? Daniel Rain always with buy the, what you have. With the I'm 10, a I like your stool. Where did you buy it? Uh, Amazon, actually. These ones were 50 bucks. OEM tools. Really, really easy to find. OEM. They've been good. I, I hated those red stools. I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so when I'm setting this up, I leave a little gap at the bottom and a little gap at the sides just so I can get as much film on here as possible. Uh, the whole window is sprayed, and then I start at the top, and basically do like a rainbow, and that's basically pulling everything down towards the bottom because there isn't that much that needs to be shrunk on a door window, typically. It depends on the door window, but you can do all your shrinking on the bottom of the window. So then I'll, I'll kind of squeegee out most of that water, being a little bit careful if there's some really big fingers that pop up. Then I'll pull it from the long corner, so where the two long sides meet together, and I'll keep basically my fingers against the door and just pull tension on it this way. So that pulls it right off the glass up to about here, and then basically I'm squeegeeing everything down, and all I'm doing is I'm shrinking right in here. I'm just trying to create a little bit of a curl, and I know there's enough curl when I let go of it and it kind of hangs off the glass, and then it snaps to the window. If there's still fingers at the bottom, then I need to shrink it a little bit more. If those, these tension lines were so hard to like press the film down, then you shrunk it too much. So that's kind of a little crash course in snap shrinking. Unfortunately, we only have four doors and they're already shrunk. But it happens with every car, um, like the, the Audi we did yesterday, um, like every, every live stream, I do the exact same thing on that. Snap shrinking would make a good video. Oh, that was the razor blade that I was looking for. So it's a tricky thing, and when I saw people trying to learn it at the class, it really threw some people for a loop. You don't necessarily even see the shrink happening before it, like, then it starts to happen. So just keep the heat gun back a little ways and give it just a couple seconds to heat up and then know when you're kind of warming that area up, you're causing that film to then pull in, which, is, which causes that bow. So if you ever think that you you know, to check your shrink, spray the window, put the film back down, and then see how it lays on the, on the glass. If there's still fingers popping up, then squeeze it back down a little bit, pull it off, shrink it a little bit more, spray it, put the film back down to check it. When you get it right, it's a really quick and efficient way to secure the entire bottom edge of the film without shrinking individual fingers. You can also shrink the other way You can still, thank you. You can still shrink the other way and just shrink individual fingers. It's just not a style that I do know. But I suppose I could show it. I always had more fingers pop up when I did it that way though. RGC super chatted $5, got it my man. Salamat Poe. <laughs> Salamat Poe, that means thank you. RGC, thank you for the five. Okay, glad to hear it.
So all you need to focus on, um, for anybody wondering about snap shrinking that's having a hard time with it, um, you're just trying to get rid of the fingers. The glass is curved, the film is flat. Oh my gosh. DC Customs and Detailing Super Chatted $5. I only paid $575 Damn. for the plotter and for the price it works amazing. I got it from model is B1350 works with Digicat. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. DC Customs, thank you so much for another five. Good to know. Yeah, I have not tried that one. See, budget plotters are, are one of those categories that like, I think right now it's changing pretty rapidly. You know, like phones. Everything starts out at a premium, and then eventually it gets cheaper um, as, like, you know, the, the technology gets cheaper and cheaper to produce, and more machines are out there, and then companies figure out how to like how to make it more cost effective. So where we're at with like plotter systems and stuff, it's always like it's a hard thing to to take a gamble on. But that's cool. Whenever I hear somebody that found yet a cheaper one that still works, it makes me want to get one. Dang, there's a whole bunch of them. Where were you guys yesterday when I was doing it? Jeffrey Horstman super chatted five dollars. Jeffrey super chatted five dollars. Thank you. I appreciate that. More fun. Make sure we're far enough over. Yeah, it, <laughs> it looks like we're getting there a little bit. <laughs> Yesterday was Taco Tuesday. We're all out eating. <laughs> That's such BS. <laughs> so it's really funny when when I post a video that just bombs because so when I made the plotter video it didn't do well and I was it was kind of sad about it it's like it always sucks to put a lot of effort into a video that just doesn't do very well and I was like why did this video not do well my wife was like Oh, because it's a Friday and people are out. I'm like, <laughs> no, that's not how it works. <laughs> and then inevitably I post a video on a Sunday and it did like way better. But it really, it doesn't, it's not actually like the time of day or the day that you post it. I mean, time a little bit, but it's not going to make or break a video. It's just funny. So now when I post something that doesn't do very well, that's the first thing that I think. That's the first thing I think. Do you ever file the tops of your windows? No, I haven't really done that. I've messed around with it some. So like I've completely dried frameless ones and I've 
cut those off successfully and messed around with it some. It, it's something I really need to invest a lot more time into. I've just tried it a bunch and been really, really unsuccessful at it. Every, like getting it consistent. So I can get a really close top edge to like where you're, it's, it's such a tinter thing. I, I appreciate it a lot, um, but it's just where I get a top edge is really, really frigging close to the end anyways. It's never been something I've ever been asked about. So I would like to be able to do it, sure, but it just doesn't happen right now. One day, one day we'll get it. You know, so when I was using this, uh, this sprayer on the outside a little bit, I was kind of missing the fan tip, but now that I spray out the bottom edge, I like the cone tip better. So there's just different spots where I like one over the other. Both are good. Why does the door film look so much larger? with the window open and you cut it back if it's a well and you put it on the outside. Um, well, there's room to tuck it in, in the side seals. So it's always a little oversized and then where the position of the window is, it'll change it a little bit. It's an illusion. So. Yeah. What happened there? Dang, I spent so much time on that too. Eh. There's a few, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna have to snap shrink another one though. There's a little, there's like a couple little specks there, like a little bit too, too much. <laughs> I don't know where they came from. Maybe it's the cone tip. Here we go again. What, what, what are we doing on passenger doors? Somebody explain that to me. I'm just gonna cut another one out, save the other piece. So it wasn't major, but I definitely noticed it. I, I don't know. I couldn't even tell you exactly where it came from. Everything seemed to install really, really nice, but then you get to the end and then you see something and then look like there was a few little extra speckles there in the, the top area of the window. Kind of sad. I don't know what happened. Let's 
pull this back down. It looks so good. Does a windshield tint scratch easy? Um, no. No, the tint goes on the inside of the glass. So there's actually not much that can happen. Unless you're like, it's gonna be as strong as what you put on the doors. It all goes on the inside. I wish there was a way to always ensure perfection. Because I swear, no matter how many times I set up as like pretty of a window as I possibly can, inevitably something will just happen. And that's the really frustrating part about tinting. It's like, you care about making the perfect result or as perfect as you possibly can. But there's things that are just always out of your control. So getting as good of a result as you possibly can sometimes takes a few more tries than even then. Perfect window, just not looking at it too closely all the time. Pull it straight. A little bit more. The car keeps making a weird sound. It keeps going. All right, snap shrinking. Who wants to know more about snap shrinking? Okay, so gap at the bottom, gap on the side, pulling it from the corner just like we, just like we talked about. And then heat gun is already going, so it's already hot. Keep it a few inches away from the glass. Just kind of rock it back and forth. If you don't want it to curl as much, just hold it a little farther back, but always keep that heat moving too. That's another thing. It's kind of, I always keep it coasting back and forth a little bit then your shrink can be real gradual. If you focus the heat too long at any one spot, like just move it faster and it doesn't, you know, it's just like your hand, right? I can't leave the heat this far away from my hand without burning myself unless I'm doing this. Then it's barely warming me up. So the slower I'm gonna do that, then it's like, ow. <laughs> you know what I mean? So same thing applies with the tint. If you keep it moving really fast, you keep your distance a little farther back, you're gonna keep it, like the whole area is gonna gradually warm up together. Okay, round two. So everything is basically clean at this point.
squeegee it, spray it down. Sometimes I think I'm too careful and that causes things to be a problem. Sometimes if you just have a nice speed, things just go better. you make a year tinting? Um, just tinting when I was doing mobile, it was anywhere from like 75 to like 95 in a year when I was working with a mobile company. So that was pretty good. Yeah, that's one thing I like I, I always appreciate about tinting is like there's this threshold um, that you can kind of hit and you always have to be kind of looking for better opportunities but you can get in the you know earlier on um, if you learn your shit pretty quickly you can get set up with with the right company or, you know, your own mobile thing or, or however you want to do it. And you can make good money doing window tent. Like, it's challenging enough for most people to learn how to do. And there's enough people that are still, like, you know, for as many people do it, it's like it's always hard to find somebody to do it right. So it's kind of just been amazing how, you know, people told me years back, they're like, oh, you're going to give all the secrets away and nobody's going to make any more money tinting. And if anything, it's like the whole thing has grown. And more people are, are asking about better films and, like, get interested in it. So it's, it's been cool to see. It's done nothing but grown. So as long as things are kind of, you know... The, the dealer or the factory can, can only tint the rear of trucks and SUVs, but that inspires front door work. So things have a weird balance to them, and for the time being still, it's, it's very promising for the future. It's a great skill to have, makes money a hundred different ways. Like you can do it full time, you can do it on the weekends, you can do it as a career side job. It's just, do you have the patience to do it? Yeah, and that too. So the factory, like most people are into tint right now still uh, just to get tint. So years ago, um, you know, they, they didn't factory privacy they, they didn't uh, tint vehicles out of the factory. So I was trying to say privacy glass at the same time. So like there's some vehicles out there that, that have like ceramic coatings built into the windows uh, that help with protection, but they're generally really light. So on like the Model 3s, on the Mustang Mach-E, they had it in the windshield. On Mercedes, certain ones they have it on. Audis, like same deal. On some vehicles, they have it built into the glass. But that's not the majority of it because that makes the glass expensive and auto companies are trying to give you, you know, they're, they're trying to nickel and dime everything that they possibly can. 
Oh, this is so much better. <laughs> worth it. So you're right. On something like this, what's cool is we have factory privacy glass on the rear, but we're doing ceramic over it because this client wants that ceramic all the way around. So we're only going with a light shade on the back, but it, it's just, I don't know, it's been really, really cool to see how the whole industry has kind of evolved and hopefully it continues to do that. You know, I used to, like even, even like six months ago, I used to think window tinting was still like ultra niche, and it is to some respect, but it's, it's got its own, its own potential like gigantic audience. It just seems to be growing more and more every year. Okay, cool. We spent a year and we have one window done. <laughs> but it is the best window that we've ever done, so I'm quite proud of it. What shade is that? So we're doing 20 on the front. Uh, we're doing 50 over the factory on the rear and then we're gonna do 50 on the windshield. So he didn't wanna change up the back very much, but still wanted that ceramic. I think it's a cool choice. I was kind of on the, like, the fence with my van too as well. I didn't know what I wanted to do on the back. Because like, I like 20. I think 20 is a great shade. It's my most popular installed shade. So when you have that factory, then it's like, okay, what do I do? Do you get asked to tint sunroofs? Once in a while, not, not super often though. I've only done a handful recently. So I'm always careful though to specify. I, I always say, so when somebody asks about a job, like how much is it for a tin job? I say sides and the back, because I'm hesitant to say everything but the windshield and then they think that the sunroof is also included in that price. And I don't think most of the time it would be a problem. But I don't like surprises, so. How much do you charge for a sunroof? So it depends on what you're getting. Um, generally, it's like 50 bucks uh, for the panel. So if it's a like multi-panel thing, um, then it'd be 100 bucks for both pieces. If it's just like one simple panel, then it'd be 50. If you want to do carbon, it would be 75 per, and then for ceramic, it'd be 100, 100 per, uh, per panel. If it's a panoramic roof and it's just one giant piece of glass, then we're talking about something completely different. But most of the time for me, it hasn't been that either. So like if we were doing like the Model 3 roof or something else, yeah, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna adjust pricing a little bit more. Mm-hmm, Model Y, exactly. So, those are just like some, some guidelines that cover most vehicles, but you're always gonna, just like any car, you're always gonna have your edge cases. I don't think this one has, no, this one doesn't have one, so it wasn't even a question on this one. I'm gonna squeeze this off one more time. Excessive, excessive clean. Twenty percent looks light. 
You look like oh. Probably an exposure thing, and with the white car. It's actually like, it's been really challenging with um, white cars and black cars. White cars are a little better. Black cars are ultra annoying uh, for, for like showing things on camera because a black car and we're, we're installing dark materials. So it, it like the camera doesn't even know what to do. And then you have like bright backgrounds and stuff. It's just, it, it's hard to keep everything even. All right. So look at this one and tell me you would rather have a shaved top edge. It's like trying to keep chicken nugget fries, chicken nugget fries. Are they chicken nuggets or are they fries? All right, looks like we're pretty stuck. I sometimes skip over the lettering, but I've been trying to remember that it exists. Because <laughs> it's gonna like silver out a little bit, but you can make it look potentially really even. That seemed to go pretty good. Dry edges are the best. They don't scratch and they last forever. Yeah, man, I've been a huge fan. Going from going from uh, easy reaches to try edges was like a natural transition. It's just a better material. The easy reach is still great for certain things, but the uh, you can't beat a try edge. Has Patrick asked you to be on his podcast? <laughs> no. No. Um, he wants to do those in person, though, so that's probably why. We've already done, like, things kind of like that. I've watched them, though. They're really good. I think he needs to change his titles, though. He's... I used to talk to him a lot about this. He needs to just retitle them, and there's potential to make them do a lot better than they were doing.
So you have some really interesting, uh, interesting guests there and perspectives. It's, it's really nice to hear. But it was funny. When we, uh, <laughs> this is just how YouTube is. So the crossover content, it only works with big personalities. Unfortunately, so as like as fun as they are to do, it's just for a channel thing. It's it's tough. It's tough to get off the ground. Easy reaches for those tight gasket seals. Hundred percent. Mm-hmm. Yep. I love them for that. And that's about all I ever use them for. So when you need one, you like, they're, they're perfect. But for most of the other stuff, they just, they rough up way too fast. Hyundai here. They put the stickers on the back door and it's on the privacy glass. It's not obnoxiously on one of the front ones. You know, I wonder how much I wonder how much Sirius actually pays to have all these stickers on vehicles or if it's just part of a part of an agreement because they outfit them with like Sirius radio and stuff. I wonder how much that's still worth. Any recommendations uh, for tint for beginners that's not too expensive? Uh, tint Depot is a pretty good resource. Tint Depot. So their five year stuff is gonna be a little bit more economical. But I pretty much use it for for practice. Then they got some better films too. Oh, did I put? Oh, I did put that there. So the thing about learning, though, is like it's an investment in yourself. So. Um, at least use something like that, like their five-year stuff. Um, stay away from the really, really cheap carbon films for practicing, because they're inexpensive uh, for a reason. Like they're just not quite as user-friendly to begin with. Tint is already challenging enough, so you want to try to make it as easy as you can on yourself. And a cheap carbon film is going to be harder to work with. Uh, than a than a cheaper dyed film, and the dyed film is going to be more clear anyways. So, Yeah, I, I wish I could recommend something like Lexan, because they seem to be like the budget friendly people's choice. Um, and they'd be fine to practice on cutting doors. So I keep forgetting that part. But I always, like, I always think about the, the whole package. Shrinking is such an important part of learning. 
where it gets really challenging. So a dyed film just naturally shrinks easier. Mainly for practice on my car and my friend's cars. That's good, yeah. Yeah, you got the right, the right idea with it. I never, um, like they got one, one ply stuff too, but I'd get like a one and a half mil film. So for doors, if you want to save the most amount of money, honestly, like Lexan, it really is a, a good choice for practice for doors. Um, but then you're going to take that same roll, go to the back window and shrinking is just going to be, it's just going to take more heat and that throws a lot of people off. So it's not that you can't learn with it, it just makes it more difficult. So look for like a more inexpensive dyed film. Even like T-View might be a good option off of Amazon for practice, honestly. Because they don't think it's carbon. So it probably shrinks fine. I just wouldn't trust it long term. That was another one I got asked about a lot. I forgot, I haven't gotten asked about it in a while. Thanks for the triage there, the best. Oh, damn, glad you like them. As you can tell, I really like them too. I use them on absolutely on everything. <sighs> Don't do Lexan, top edge fades fast. Really? Like you've seen it fade? It's supposed to be carbon. Isn't carbon not supposed to fade? Huh. Um, bar soap, what? Or chalk powder as, as DSP, what? Bar soap or chalk powder as DSP. Um, I never, I, I haven't heard of chalk powder, but I guess that makes sense because people use baby powder. I never liked the baby powder method. I like something that would create a little bit of stick. There's some guys that really like the baby powder method, but I think more people like uh, like a substance there, like dry string prep or whatnot. But yeah, I, I hear good things about bar soap. forgot about baby powder. <laughs> Cheap shrinking methods. That's how all this stuff got its start. So there's people that use dryer sheets, baby powder, baby soap. It's just cheap local options. That's where they come from. Readily available. A lot of people try them. This looks very good. We're getting that groove. Everybody should use DSP. Yeah, DSP's good. Yeah, there we go. I'm gonna grab a new piece of plastic. You must choose five items to tin a windshield. Which do you pick? That's like every tool. <laughs> Glass I didn't DSP together. Just saw this one in here. I don't, oh wait, duh. Here it is. Let me grab a new one anyways. 
So heat gun, knife, um, squeegee, so like a handled squeegee. I count that as one. Um, and a uh, squeegee, knife, heat gun. Oh yeah, you could use a felt card. Honestly, you could double up. I could use one of these instead of a hard card and shrink with this and squeegee with this at the same time. But I think five gives me the op gives me a whole lot of options actually. I think I pretty much only use five tools when I shrink a windshield. <laughs> Belt guard, heat gun. Knife. I mean, I guess if I get to use like a, a dryer sheet, that counts. And then a handled squeegee. Is that four or is that five? And then if I need a longer tool, I guess I'll use a bulldozer. Bulldozer or a side swipe and then boom, there you go. That's like every car. What car is that? This is a Kona. This is the N edition. This looks sweet. This is one of those hot hatchbacks. Been watching your vids for a few weeks now, been sitting 10 years, picked up a lot of things from watching you, great content, very informative, even for an experienced center. Thank you, I really appreciate that, a whole lot. It's nice to have other tinters that can just appreciate me trying to do my own thing too. So thank you for that. What's the dryer sheet used for? See, for like limited tool choice, I actually wouldn't use a towel or a rope because I just take, I'll take my chances on the windshield. It'll probably be fine. <laughs> So dryer sheet or dry shrink prep or soap bars or anything used like baby powder for shrinking windshields or back windows. Uh, if you go back and watch the last video that I posted, um, you clean the window off and then you gotta put some material back on it and that helps with shrinking the windshield. If you don't have anything there, the film just doesn't grab the glass in the right way when you're shrinking it. It just like, it snap, crackle, pops. It does weird things. It doesn't lay flat. But when you put something down, which is why there's so many options, um, it just makes everything go nice and smooth. Can you reuse a clay bar? Oh, for sure, you just rinse it out in warm water. So a clay bar will eventually start to, to just kind of discolor. And it, it, you know, it's like a scrub pad. It's like, you can still use it for a long time, but there's probably like some level of scuzz that you're like, yeah, I should probably just replace it. I don't know how long that is. I've used the same clay bar for months though. It's just the, you know, they're white clay bars. The reason that they're white is to help show what you're actually pulling off the glass, like a white towel. So, you know, a white towel, if you use it once, it's dirty. You try and wash it, it'll still be dirty looking, but it'll still work, right? So just use it as long as you feel is fine.
All right. Glass door window. Five tips for somebody's first back window. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and just try it and then rewatch the video. It's hard to it's hard to be specific on advice like that. Everybody's a little bit different on what types of mistakes that they're going to make. Even with shrinking, it's like everybody does something a little bit different. So all the info is in the videos. Follow that. And don't be afraid to make a mistake because shrinking is hard. Mm. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, trash getting picked up off of the glass and wiping it back over with a clay bar. So it's kind of like paint. Like, because you're a lot safer. You're a lot safer with, uh, with a clay bar on glass than you are paint. And that's where they really got their start. They're, they're a paint cleaning tool. So they just work really well for glass. I mean, there's glass-specific clay bars, but generally that just means they're a little bit finer. Um, but they work, they work for both. So you're way more likely to do some type of damage on the paint than you ever would be on the glass. So you can get away with quite a lot. Do you have a level of acceptance for dirt on the tint? Yeah, for sure. Um, but that being said, it's pretty much like, <laughs> like there needs to be some sort of understanding that not everything is going to be perfect, but it's going to be really frigging good. So the level of acceptance is really like what's okay for the client. I try and make it as perfect as I possibly can. There's always gonna be something that you can point at that you're not gonna like. So it's an aftermarket process. Um, and I wish I could do a perfect, perfect job, but we're pretty close. You know, it's just like your paint. You look too close at it, you're gonna start noticing little things here and there, and then once you notice it, you don't not notice it. But that being said, if, it, if something stands out um, a fair amount, like I can step back from the, the glass and like, oh, what is that? Like, yeah, we, we've got an issue. So I usually go smaller than, than those types of things, but those are definitely like the big red flag ones where you're just gonna see me redo a window. So clusters of stuff, like somebody said in chat, creases, those are pretty much no-nos. Um, any, any type of like, you know, like a, a scratch, if you were to see that in the window tin, that's obviously a no-no. Um, you're just not trying to create anything obvious. Oh, good. Holy shit, is that? Oh my God, that's on the outside. <laughs> that was like the perfect spot that looked like it was on the inside, but it was on the outside, thank God.
if I was close enough to your shop, I'd bring my truck there instead of trying to do it myself. <laughs> There's still good tin shops around. But I appreciate that. Let me grab a new towel, too. Mm, can you point out mistakes that you think are okay, like a small spec or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. This is what's really challenging for me. I, like, showing the real small stuff is, is a little hard to do on camera. And the other thing is, when you, like I said, when you point out a spec, when you see something, you don't unsee it. So I'm not going to highlight something that's wrong with my tint job that a client then is then going to watch and then like, oh, yeah, I do see that. Can you do a better job? <laughs> you, you, get, you get the problem that I have? So clients watch this too. It's like painting an entire car and then like, oh yeah, there's like a little dust nib right here. And then somebody's like, the person that's actually paying for the job is then like, oh yeah. Can you do, can, can you redo that? <laughs> Limit to six specs? No, not even that, no, 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 no. You, you're never gonna find a tangible way to explain imperfections. Like, oh, let's count them. You gotta find six of them and then I'll redo the window. <laughs> no, if somebody finds like one or two little things that are like hyper small, you, you're typically within the realm of being able to like, look, I, I can't redo it. It doesn't make any sense to do it. Um, but not brushing somebody off like that and not trying to redo it, that's what makes it really tricky for you as a business because they have a bad taste in their mouth about getting the job, right? Even, even if you can kind of explain it away, like clients really like feeling like they're actually cared about. So when it's a, it's a concern or a problem for them, like if it was just like, hey, what is that? That's one thing, but if they're like, hey, uh, I think there's a problem with my window, that's usually more of, okay, we have to redo it. But that being said, that's when you can really then try and explain, hey, it's not a perfect process. I'll try and do the best I can to take care of it. And then people are pretty reasonable. So, you know, it's where you gotta, like, I, I've had to do that um, a fair amount uh, with jobs where, you know, after it's done, I think it's it's super, super good. And then here or there, you know, everything dries out, everything settles, and then it's like somebody sees something and it's like, oh yeah, there is something there. Let's take care of it. Hopefully it's nothing major. And it doesn't, but like I had to do that on a Honda CRV not too long ago. <laughs> that was not a fun day. All right, so what is this? This is the this is 35. Hang on one second. Over there? Two seconds. <laughs> Have you ever taken a big L on a tin job?
Seriously, where is it? Where's my meter? Oh, do I have to go back in footage? Oh my god. Oh, there it is. It's under the under the things. I'm gonna have an aneurysm in about two seconds, I swear. Fuck. Ugh. How did I do that? This is a bad day. Somebody said this was light. I blamed it on the camera. No, you were right. That's 35. <laughs> uh, it's not 20, it's 35. God damn it. This is a real bad day now. Oh, it looks so good, too. I knew it was light. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to the stream. Welcome to a new episode where we are going to pull off the front doors and redo them in the actual shade that they were supposed to be done. There's no happy mistakes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like legitimately really bad. It's not like I feel rushed or anything. It's just you never want to put that much work into any window and then just go, oh, I put the wrong shade on it. What a boneheaded move. <laughs> I'm not the only one that fucks up. <laughs> maybe they won't, maybe they won't notice. Yeah, he's sitting up front. I'd rather just have it, I, I don't even want to try and explain it. I just want it, I just want it done right. And what we settled on in the beginning, so, and just. No, I'm gonna do 20. That side peeled clean because we just did it. This side is the first one that we did. If you weren't live, you wouldn't have made the mistake. Yeah, legitimately, probably. <laughs> it's all right, soon enough we'll be past it. <laughs> so many people are like, just talk the customer into liking it. Honestly, probably would like it, but. I don't like it. <laughs> Told you it was like, I know. I know you did. Um, and I still stand by what I said. It's tough to tell, especially with the, uh, with the white car. Things always look like they're something else, so. It's all right. 
We got some pretty back windows, though. <laughs> that, that for sure is 50. Gonna be mad when he calls and says the film is too dark. I would be mad then, right? No, 20. So if I had in in like a different shop doing a lot of cars, that's something that a shop is then going to be like, are you sure you don't want 35? But come on, guys. This is different. This is this is not average work going on here. So if we put the wrong shade on it, I'm not just going to try and explain it away. That's dumb. I mean, you gotta don't don't put yourself in my shoes. Put yourself in the guy that's getting the work done. You're paying somebody to do something. Like, yeah, accidents happen. But like, <laughs> right, like you might be able to, to make it not a problem for you, but they got to live with it. And if it's, you know, if they were hoping for 20 and then they drive around with it, it might be okay enough. And look, it's door windows. No, I'm just Truck mad at myself that he's catch it. nine dollars and ninety nine cents. We all make mistakes. Here's a few doll hairs to cover the learning experience. Lol. <laughs> Thank you. Look, it's fine. Um, does it suck? Yeah, for sure. I, like I said, I'm mad at myself because I just I know how I made the mistake. Um, I'm just like really annoyed that I made the mistake. So I put the 50 or I put the 35 in the 20 box because yesterday we did 35 and 20. So I just picked up a roll. I didn't double check. I put it in the wrong box. And then there you go. I grab a roll without double checking it because yeah, it's the 20. It's in the 20 box. Looks close enough. That's probably what it is. But it was not. So that's all. Shit happens, yes. <laughs> Efren Thank Garcia you. super chatted nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. Nobody is perfect, Sensei. Why does he want perfect? Or, sorry, I read a super chat and spoke at the same time. Why does he want, uh, why does he want darker in the front? Oh, it's just 20, it's very normal. We do it all the time. I'd rather have 20 on the front doors too. So that's especially why I'm not even gonna try and bring it up. I'm not gonna try and sell it. But thank you. There's a few of them there. Um, Efren, Efren, thank you so much for the 20. And then Truck and Stacker, thank you so much for the 10. I appreciate that, both you guys.
Oh. No, so we did 50 on the back, but he's got privacy glass too. So we're doing 20 on the front doors. Um, so the front is still gonna be lighter than the back. So it's not weird, don't worry, it's not weird. Wish we weren't on doors for three hours. But yeah, I blame streaming. It really does, it, it is taxing. This is also why I kind of want a couple of just tint days. I, don't get me wrong, I like streaming. I set up time for it, um, but it does get pretty taxing still to try and run everything, and then it's not that hard to make one of those simple little mistakes that actually adds up to be quite a bit. It sucks when it happens, but it's okay. We'll forget about it by the end of the stream. <laughs> I just wish that, like, Hey, I've been doing this for a long time. You would think at some point, <laughs> you would think at some point I'd be much less likely to make a dumb mistake like this, but it happens. for a little bit and then they tune out and they come back and they're like, wow, he's been working on that Kona for a long time. <laughs> and he'll come a different blade. We're going full circle now. Uh, the carbon blade, the thin carbon blades, they do a really nice job on top edges. The, as for the holder, um, I don't know, it's just kind of something. Like, if you press too hard with a, uh, with a red dot, you can put a little groove in the film. With a plastic handled blade, um, you're not gonna risk that same type of score at the top. And so I, like I lost my blade yesterday, or my holder yesterday, I lost a red dot. So then I grabbed something different for the top edge and I was actually just kind of surprised. It's like, huh, cheesy plastic knife actually did really good. <laughs> so I just used it again. Very, very same, similar results, though. Okay, shrinking. You wanna go back over shrinking, so Squeegee out the windows, grab your heat gun, follow it back to wherever it was, and then see with that side, I'm gonna pull with my left hand because it's on the other side. And then on the driver's side, the long side still, grab it from this, leave my hand against the glass, just pick up the film off the bottom enough with some tension, 
and then keep that heat gun moving back and forth. Watch it for a little bit of a curl. And then when it looks like you have enough, put it down and see how it looks. If it's not shrunk enough, pick it back up, do it a little bit more. Oh, the Explorer. Yeah, thank you. Glad you like it. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I know, the snap shrinking. Yep, that's why we went over it again. It's a happy opportunity. No, it's not. It's frustrating. All right, let's make sure this is all clean now. No, it, it, exactly that, the bottom edge curls. Ripple, curl. Bow. Hard to explain exactly what, but just watch. Or no, when it, so it's it's kind of hard to explain in words exactly what is going on. So it's as much of like watch what's happening as it's happening and you'll see like a little bit of a curl. So snap shrinking gets its name as far as I know from the way it snaps back down to the glass. the most you've made in a month tinting where you were oh okay can I get the question um I think it's when I was clearing over over grand a week pretty consistently and then it was like 1500 and then it was like a couple grand but you know who you work for and what they pay you. Um, like you can get paid good as a tenor and you can get paid crappy as a tenor too. So I remember making like $30, $36,000 a year on basically like hourly slash salary. Uh, as a tinter, because I was tinning um, for family and still getting, like, I was still, like, learning slash tinting, and then I was a full-time tinter, and, but, you know, you get, you get paid what you get paid. <laughs> the company still got to make their money, and then I, I got paid hourly, and then, and then we switched to, like, an hourly slash commission, like, I got paid every every which way so i don't know every shop pays a little differently every like you can also work for yourself and just get paid as a contractor. There's a lot of ways to do it. I don't know what the best way is, just figure out what makes you the most. The biggest pay increases unfortunately happen too when you have to jump ship to another company.
But that's why you see so many people start their own tinting operation, because they, they see how much money gets made off of one job, they see material costs, and then they're like, well, I can do that for cheaper, or I can do that on my own. And it's true, you can, but there's a little bit more to it than what you might think. <laughs> so I have to punch a time card and listen to the annoying boss. <laughs> that goes both ways. <laughs> It's hard. Then you get used to the money that you're making, and then, you know, all of a sudden, like, what was an awesome pay bump is, is then kind of just normal, and you're always wanting to grow. That's really tough for shops, but I found it's, I found it's uh, kind of required Oh, that's cool. I work at a warehouse. I have two to four days off a week, and I'm learning how to tin as a side hustle. That is an, actually a really comfortable setup because you have plenty of time to learn how to do it and do it. PPF makes more than window tinning. Um, yeah, with the rate, so it depends on location and, and company and everything. So. There's some places here that, that do really well on PPF, and I know they basically pay their guys like a high school job. They send them down to, they sent them down to like Texas to, to expel's PPF thing, and they just pay them hourly. <laughs> so, I, some people don't get, uh, do PPF and don't even get paid well. So it's all dependent on like, the company and and the setup and but PPF like so we tried to bring in paint protection film that looks better we tried to sorry we tried to bring in uh, paint protection film um, at my uh, at my dad's company, and it was very slow going, and it never really took off, and it was a giant headache. So they would sell a job every once in a blue moon, like once every other month or something, and it would be a pretty substantial job to do, but I, I wouldn't have any consistent PPF practice or experience with it. So we had our rep come in for some training. I could do a reasonable job on paint protection film, and then I would hop back and forth between that and tinting um, for a couple days, get the job done, and then inevitably there, you know, there'd be a couple little spots that, that we'd have to redo. We'd have to reorder a kit, and we'd have to take that off and put a new one on, and blah, blah, blah. blah or somebody would order the wrong kit from the beginning, and like I would try to cut it out on the plotter, and then it would off track, and <sighs> so many things. So, um, I think some guy, like, you, I, you absolutely can make a lot of money doing paint protection film, and it can be a really, really good career. Um, but just like window tinning, you can make great money doing window tinning. How your setup really matters. Jeez, so annoying. 
Hello, Tin Studio. How can I help you? Hey, uh, yeah, this is uh, Rudy. You're uh, 10 o'clock on Saturday. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Uh, yeah, I had a question for you. Um, sure. I'm actually, I just received, uh, I bought a tunnel cover for the truck. I don't know, is that going to get in your way if I put that on, or do you just want me to go without, without the tunnel cover? Oh, you're totally fine. You can put that on. I'll do all the cutting on the inside anyway, so feel free to install that. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate the question. See ya. Well, that was nice of them. Usually don't have clients call ahead of time asking about if something's going to get in my way. That's really nice. Age equals your wage. <laughs> Ted Kaniki super chatted twenty dollars. You should make tin super. studio tape. Sick of seeing that Lowe's branding lol. <laughs> Damn, Ted, thank you for the 20. You should make Tint Studio tape. Sick of seeing that Lowe's branding. It's not that I haven't thought about it. Maybe, maybe someday. So, like a big reason Glass Aid exists, and uh, and I haven't done like a, a Lowe's tape replacement, is because what I like about some of these solutions is that they're easy to get, and there's nothing like so with Glass Aid there's there's like literally nothing. So there has like I there, there needed to be a solution for it. With this is like, okay, I could go to the store, I could pick up some Lowe's tape, or I could order the Tin Studio tape. So it, like, it doesn't need to exist, but I do really, really appreciate that. I'm going to do this one more time. <laughs> I'm so paranoid about this. So I, w I always like it to have some utility outside of like just not being able to, to get it. And then some of the other Tint Studio stuff for like, I love Tri-Edge, it's super cool that we could partner on, on a tool like this. That's awesome. The tape is a little different, but so it still might happen someday. I'm just glad that there's like a good option that you can get pretty much anywhere. RGC, oh, Sun Distributing is looking for RGC because they want to give them some stuff. Oh, that's cool. Thank you for letting us know. Yay. Global? Um, I hear really good things about Global. I, it's one of the few brands that I hear a lot about that I haven't I haven't um, actually used it hardly at all. But 
global is uh, is like Gori, Gori's staple manu or staple brand, I think. I trust it. All right. And this. Hello, Tin Studio. How can I help you? Hey, I was just wondering if you could give me a, a quote for the, uh, uh, just like a little bit of tennis windows for my car. So I just need the one for the front shield, uh, front windshield, just the top one third of it. How much would you guys charge for that? For a wind, just a, like a windshield strip? Uh, windshield strip would be 60 bucks. Okay, and then is there any warranty for that? Um, yeah, all the films come with uh, what is called a color stable dyed or color stable lifetime warranty. So if there's any bubbling uh, or fading, it would all be covered. Okay, and then is that like a ceramic coating too or no? No, uh, that would be our entry level film. So just doing the top, uh, like, the top portion of the windshield really isn't going to do much in a ceramic, but I could do it in a ceramic. Um, we are like I actually could get you in on Thursday. That would be the earliest I could do it. What time? Uh, Thursday about twelve twelve thirty. Okay. I could schedule you out a little bit farther. What's that? What's the latest appointment you guys have? Um, usually about 2 o'clock is, is the latest I, I pull appointments in. Mm hmm. Uh, we do uh, also attend on, on Saturdays. Um, it's a little bit booked up in advance, so I, I can check the calendar. It, it might be another week before I can get you in, though, on a Saturday. Okay. Uh, yeah, can you let me know what's the next uh, available Saturday you guys have? Yeah, sure. One second. Canon. All right. Let's see here. I was just wrapping up a window. Let me check my schedule. Um, I could get you in the 14th at 10 a.m. Now, is it possible for me to drop it off if I can just drop it off in my house? Yeah, that would be fine. It's not going to take very long to do just the windshield strip. Um, but you can definitely drop yeah. it off. Yeah, but let me just uh, see if I can do it. I just got to make sure I have a car. <laughs> so yeah, no problem. I have somewhere to go back then. Um, all right, thank you very much. All right, have a good one. All right, you too. A whole windshield strip. <laughs> oh. Oh, battery died. Wow, off of doors. Jesus, that tells you how long we've been doing this for. Um, good thing we have the charger going. Stop sticking. It's AutoZone cheap tint, a good thing to practice with. Um, it's not the best. It's kind of crappy and you don't get a lot of film, but if you want to just like, I mean, it's usually like, 15, 20 bucks for a roll, so it's kind of worth it just to go grab something now and then see how you like it. Um, so plug that guy in. There we go. That's charging. I was reading the video description. You started as a helper in 89. How old are you? What? That's not accurate at all. 
I didn't say I started in 89. Um, where did you buy those door guards? What door guards? All right, should be good. Oh, the Sun Distributing? That's, uh, that's not my company. That's Rick's company. So that sounds more accurate. Yeah, he started, a, he's been tinning, um, he was tinning for over 30 years. AutoZone has metal in their films. They've got some metalized film, I think, but they also have regular film. Like, there's a whole range of films that you can get. Um, you know, I would just get the least expensive dyed film that they have and then just try that. Okay, cool. We did doors. <laughs> Six hours later. <laughs> but they look good. Yay. So 20 on the fronts, 50 over the backs. Um, that looks pretty awesome. Things turned out nice. We finally got there. So we're going to cut out the back window on the plotter. Let's raise that up there. It's got these little quarter windows too. We could put a whole bunch of them on there if we wanted, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. So we're doing, we're doing 50 on the back. So let me see if I have a short roll of 50. That would help a lot um, rather than trying to do like a longer roll. Now I'm going to have so many people telling me to double check <laughs> film percentages, which I can appreciate, but damn. I think this one. I think this was a 50%. So it'll not necessarily be exactly 48. Yep, this is that 50. Cool. I do have a short roll of this. Awesome. That'll help. That'll help a whole bunch for that back window. So we're going to pull this out. Twenty-four. <laughs> okay, put that in. Yes, I'm checking the film <laughs> multiple times. Thank you. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, creases happen a lot. Probably spend $60 a day practicing when I'm off my job. Nice. That's how you do it. It's never fun to, like, spend that. So if you're already... Oh, God. Don't cut. Oh, okay. I thought it just sent. It didn't. Okay. That's what that red is. Like it's doing something. So here we'll take the back window. We'll click cut. Now do it. Good. Yeah, so I brought this up at the beginning. That back window is uh, very reminiscent of the Type R. <laughs> it's not quite as, it's not, it's not the, near the same difficulty, but it's got a spoiler that is just way in the way.
Oh, so what I was saying about um, like spending sixty dollars a day on like AutoZone tint. Um, if you're ordering, like if you're buying film regularly, just get hundred foot rolls. Get them from like Tint Depot or somewhere, and you'll save yourself money because, like, it's fine to to pick up some film, like some short rolls, and just like play around with it because it's it's like hey, fifteen, twenty bucks for for a roll of film. Not that big of a deal. But when you're buying a lot of them, you're spending way more on film than you're even spending on like good quality films, actually. Yeah, they make good money on cheap, cheap rolls. Oh, the interior door protector? Uh, it's a sticky plastic called Carpet Shield. Works really well. Do you find ceramic difficult to shrink? Not Pro Nano. Pro Nano is an amazingly easy sh film to shrink. Super, super good. So I have an older video on the channel that's actually a direct comparison between um, the ceramic that I was using and Pro Nano. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and snap this. This should be fine. And then we'll clean the inside and then see where it matches up. So if everything goes well, it should be totally fine. I don't think there's like a lot of shrinking that needs to be done with this. So I shouldn't have to snap it very much. Probably a little bit more than that, though. There, that's better. Good. So if there's a couple little fingers on the inside, that's fine. SunTech should shrink pretty well. I haven't, so I haven't used Lumar or SunTech in a long time. Um, I never used SunTech very much, um, but I, we were a Lumar dealer for a while. Lumar is just expensive, um, so like our pricing structure didn't make any sense for it, and I, <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> like, good, easy film to, to work with, but man, was it, uh, was it ever expensive. But that was at the time. Now there's a lot of films that are pretty easy to, uh, pretty easy to shrink. Yeah, so I just would assume that they're the same, but I remember at the time, SunTech was an independent company, and then they got bought out. So for a while, SunTech was, was different. At this point in time, I have no idea. But yeah, SunTech's gonna have some some deal with Tint World. So 
would kind of be amazing. I never have to touch the outside of this window to get the whole thing tinted. So I, I just tried to stamp this on the glass board. And I don't know quite how much, so I'm really just guesstimating here. I used to shrink a lot of door windows on glass boards, so it's nothing I'm not familiar with. go. Looking good. Insufficient disk space. Oh, oh. <laughs> I've been recording like every live stream for no reason. I got to clear some of that. So the cone has been around for a little bit. This is a different style spoiler setup, I, I'd imagine. But if I know enough about lazy manufacturing, the glass should very much be the same. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to recut this. These fingers here, these are big. So it's going to take a little, quite a bit more shrinking than what I gave it credit for. So to illustrate what's going to happen if you don't shrink it enough, this is what happens when you don't shrink it enough. These big old fingers, because the, the film has nowhere to go. So see all these guys right here? It's way too much. These areas where I snapped it a little bit more, that one was OK, but then yeah, we got big old fingers. We're not going to be able to get this to lay down. All right, so we're going to have to shrink it on the window. We're just going to do it a little bit better on the next one. That's why I like plotters, though. <laughs> cool. That was a 1,000. That was a calculated mistake, believe it or not. So everything's cutting good. Let's cut out another one. So then we're just going to click this. We're going to click cut. And then there, it's doing its thing. Please be OK. <laughs> It's not a calculated mistake. Now, if you ask me what went wrong between the first one and the second one, dude, I have no fucking clue. We're going to set there and do that. Yep, that's how it goes. I didn't change anything. 
<laughs> I have no idea. I walked away. That's, that's as best as I could say. I don't know. I walked away. That's why it screwed up. I made sure everything was on the rollers. I made sure that the, the cutter was in the right thing. I didn't switch anything. Everything was locked down. I click cut. I walk away. And then it decided to jump off a cliff. Now it's fine. <sighs> Did a roller move? No. No, like everything was left where it was supposed to be. So, I don't know, something happened. Oh, that's a little baby one. I'm actually gonna take off the wiper in this case. I typically don't, but I'm gonna take the wiper off. Free up a little bit of space here. It's so new that this should be real easy. Quarter inch drive, probably a 10 mil. Oh, what? Really? Oh, that's this one. Right, this is a quarter inch drive. It's either a 10 or it's a 13. Look at that, it's a 10. Yay, plotter. Pretty much. Okay. Brand new makes it way easier to remove because it's not rusty. Well, it was, I, so I cinch it down straight. I make sure both rollers are, are on the film. I cinch it down and then I click cut. And I, I like to think I know what I'm doing with the first one. And then I did the identical thing with the second one. And then it just decided to jump off a cliff. The difference was I walked away. <laughs> when I walk away and don't babysit it, that's when I have problems. So if I really wanted to, um, I can put it on the inside. I can kind of notch out this and then get it farther up and then shrink it more on the glass. I'd like to just leave the cutout where it is flat across. So as long as I can get enough film on that back window, then we're, we'll be fine with not having to modify the pattern at all. I don't like that there's not an option for the cutout but they probably didn't need one. Everything seemed to line up fine though. I am psychic, that's how. I think there's space. I think there's like legitimately space in between this right here. Oh no shit. Nothing is touching the glass here. Oh, so we can put the film up farther than I thought. That'll make that easier. This is why the first thing that I ever prep is typically a back window. So I don't have to sit here with a heat gun for a little bit.
This is probably more in line with the focus. It just doesn't look like it. Okay, so we press that button. And get some film. Yeah, I have a whole video on the setup, actually. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, this was no easy feat to try and figure out. All the all the comments get read to me. Uh, so it's kind of a lot to, to handle, but you get used to it with enough, <laughs> with enough practice. But that being said, I didn't think it looked like it had been tending for longer than a day. Fifty, where's, there we go. There's your back window. used to watching edited videos of that tuning took 15 minutes. It can. <laughs> All right. So I honestly, I couldn't even see with how dark this was up here. Look at that tucks right up underneath. That's really helpful. Still not gonna be ultra easy to shrink up there, but it'll, it'll help out a lot because it can move most of this to the bottom. And just deal with shrinking a little bit more on the bottom if I really want to. So we'll blow some air underneath it. But yeah, this, if I knew there was this much to shrink, which isn't a lot, it's like pretty normal, but I wouldn't have snapped it. I thought it was a lot flatter. But that is why we didn't get it the first time. I'm so glad that they accounted for some space in there. I'm really surprised that they did. That license plate. I know, right? <laughs> right. I can't get a great angle on it until I'm farther down, so I'm just gonna be really careful. I think I got, I think I lucked out a little bit on this back window, honestly, because this to me really is like the equivalent of almost having like a type R come in like the Civic hatch, and then you're just not ready for it. And you're like, oh God, how do I do this? I have no idea. Like I, have n I had no plan in order bef before I went live. It just seemed like it was easy enough, but there's actually like a fair amount of curve on it. Like just similar enough to like the focus hatch. Where you need the glass. But if there was no space in between there, we would have had to readjust 
your strategy a little bit more. Can you try and shrink it once it's been applied? Not really. It's really tough because the water starts drying out. It doesn't really go smoothly. I've seen some really skilled people successfully do it on like that, on the Civic hatch. I tried it. I'm just not a skilled man. It just was not, it was not happening the same way. So. So like small stuff, sure, but if it's really big, then it's just, it's not happening. So like with most hatches, I honestly can't really see, kind of just going by like what I feel. Actually doing a good job. Damn, it's like almost all down. There's so much more space up here though. I can't hardly see it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And then the middle is gonna be the most flat. Sweet. There's our shrunk pattern. Yay, we did a thing. So we'll have that, we'll have the quarter windows, and then uh, the full windshield. I'm glad I tried it though. Like snapping it just to see, but if I had put a piece of film up there, I would have known. <laughs> I would have known a little quicker. I'd have to put a lot of snap on it. I just, <laughs> I can't tell a lot of things today, apparently. What shade is 35? I don't know. That window looks pretty flat. No. <laughs> this is my first day. See, look at look at how much more boat it is on this glass. It's a lot more than I thought. <laughs> what does 35% look like? I don't even know. <laughs> like, that would happen to me so many times. That's why I have a tint meter. The, the tint meter, I don't have questions. Uh, my only question with the tint meter is where the hell did I put it? Cause then I use it and then I misplace it, just like everything else. Still can't find my other knives, still can't find my screwdriver. I don't know what it is. Too absent-minded. All right, make sure everything is covered. They did an awesome job on this pattern. So 
the alternative would have been um, if that plastic cut out here, like if this was cinched against the glass and they didn't have room to shrink it, then I would have put it on the inside. I would have cut out and then put it back on the outside of the glass and then shrunk it. But this is nice because it goes flat against it. And they also put these defroster lines straight over the frit line. It's kind of a, a harder thing to cut then. You would score it or mark it with a Sharpie or something, I suppose. When you're thinking about your vacation. <laughs> Like, there's just a lot of my time gets occupied with, with thinking about, like, freaking YouTube stuff. I mean, between YouTube stuff, um, upcoming, like, business appointments... Like, there's just a lot of little things on my plate. So I'm like, I'm not overwhelmed. I just get distracted. But then I gotta, like, I'm just in a weird spot where I gotta hire somebody, but that's gonna take some time and effort to, like, hire somebody. And then I just hope there's enough work for them to do that it makes sense. Yeah, and I have to entertain all you guys. <laughs> That's true. So, like, whenever, whenever I'm streaming, I kind of get put in my own little bubble where, like, I really can't do much for the business. It's all about doing the job and the stream. So I'm kind of like weirdly isolated. So like not a lot actually gets done other than the car while I'm streaming. And then after I'm done, now it's like come back to reality and I, I got other stuff that I have to do that I just got to try and remember. <laughs> like my card reader. <laughs> Brought my card reader home yesterday. And I said, I'm going to forget this. And then I walk out the door, and I totally forgot to bring my card reader to the shop today. I knew I would forget. OK. So back window went in. A little bit of shrinking on the inside. See, we got it pretty close. With the spoiler in the way, Get it close enough, touch it up on the inside. Totally cool. But the big giant fingers, no. Too much. And I'll also check, so there's like a little finger right there. I'm gonna make sure that's pressed down. There'll probably be a couple little ones that'll pop up still. As it dries out, just water sits on the edges as it dries out. Um, gets better and better. Oh, Patrick's on. Oh, that's cool. Finally got his shop and his setup. It's good. It's about time. It was really funny. Because. At like rewind a couple of years. I didn't want a shop. He wanted a shop. 
I ended up getting a shop, and he went mobile. <laughs> it was like, it really was a very weird thing. He talked to Martin too much. <laughs> and then he went mobile, and then he got a shop. But it, it, it created a good start, but everybody gets tired. Everybody that I talk to gets tired of, uh, of going purely mobile. down, press enter, oh, yeah, I got the quarter windows out. Could have cut the quarter windows out with the back glass, I just didn't feel like chancing it. It's a very easy thing to hopefully just then click cut and hopefully we'll be good. The point fifty eight cents per mile isn't bad. I heard uh, I heard alligator he said he was spending twenty five hundred dollars a month in just fuel costs. And that's like, oh dang, that's more than I pay in rent. Not with utilities, but that is substantial. So you lose in, uh, like, a lot of things kind of balance themselves out. Yeah, having a physical store, you're not able to run around as much, but you can take on more clients at one space, and people have people can drop things off. One of the most frustrating things when I was doing mobile um, was like if it wasn't for a shop, if it was going to somebody's house, which <laughs> I didn't do a lot of it, trying to set up an actual space um, was always a challenge. Like most people don't have a garage with enough room to tin a car, they just don't. So that cuts down your client base by quite a bit. And then tinning outside isn't really much of an option. I don't want to get too far into it, but yeah. I didn't want to shop, but I appreciate all the opportunities that come along with having a shop. It can be, the overhead can be really scary, but if you use it right, you're gonna love having, a, having some type of space. So I kind of wish that was still like the home garage. I really like tinning from home, but that's got its problems too, so you know. Perfect. Oh. <laughs> Let's put this over here. We'll put that wiper back on it in a little bit. Okay, good. <laughs> Thought I saw a little line. It's outside, it's not inside. Yay! Good. Quarter window done. Let's do the other side. the 
this guy. <laughs> what is the quarter window over there? I don't know. They just put them on everything. It's kind of silly. These ones are at least pretty easy to tint, though. Nice little borders around them. Not quite like the, I don't know, Hondas or Subarus. Okay, cool. So the rear is done. Now we gotta do the windshield. Usually it always has to do with, uh, with costs. With costs and legal requirements. It's usually what a lot of things do. So like the front quarter windows, um, I don't know. I, I've had quite a few different automotive like engineers come in here. And there's one guy that was actually a glass engineer. And he just kind of, like we were just casually talking about it. And he's like, yeah, if I had to guess, I don't know the, the exact answer, but like on this vehicle, but a lot of times they need enough space on the, uh, they need enough space on the inside of the window there, or like inside of the frame for the whole thing to go up and down. So sometimes it's just simple design choices and uh, manufacturing, um, but they'll put the quarter windows here and they'll have just a nice space for the rest of the window to roll down into, so it just makes engineering the door easier. That's at least what he told me. So it's an extra piece of glass, but just easier all together. Which makes sense, because you've seen quite a few cars do that. There's all that. Good, good, good. Let's get our squeegee back. And uh, 50. Oh, we have the short roll of 50 there. We have the long roll here. And we have to double check it. We don't want to use the bad roll. Yes, we got it, 50%. Bet that little one costs more than the fronts if it breaks. <laughs> Sounds like you know what you're talking about. So that, that two-door Civic that was here for a long time, um, I had to knock out uh, the rear quarter window? Well, I didn't have to. So the car had been sitting all winter. The battery died. I jumped it. And then I had both keys. Um, we were going to move it over to the shop. And then it had, con like, it's got confusing lock and unlock buttons. Like, they weren't marked. And it had, like, the little red thing, I, you know, the like when it's locked, it's, it's red, like this, this little thing here. That means it's unlocked. I thought that meant it locked or whatever. I just, I didn't remember at the time. So I wasn't really paying attention to lock the keys in the car. And then the car was running. So I was trying to get into the car and ended up popping the uh, rear quarter accidentally. I wasn't trying to be super careful about it, but that quarter window was more expensive than the roll down window. Long story short, that's what the, uh, that's what the glass shop said too. <laughs> it was really funny, because I told him, I'm like, I need, a, I need a quarter window. And he's like, that's the most expensive window. I'm like, really? He's like, you sound just like 
I do when I ask about quarter windows with tinting. And I'm like, ah, <laughs> touche. Yep, quarter windows are expensive because they're not popular. Most people break out the roll down windows. They total the car if that little glass breaks. <laughs> I bet it's happened. You throw tint in the trash or the recycle bin? Uh, I just throw it in the dumpster. You know, I have not really thought much about being very eco-friendly with it, so I don't know. I don't even think we have recycling here. We just got dumpsters, so everything goes in the dumpster. That's how it's been for any shop that I've tinted for. Everything just goes in the dumpster. Yeah, we waste lots of plastic. People are like, straws. And here we are like throwing away full rolls of tent with liners. So like, yeah, we're very wasteful. They don't add to it. <laughs> or I don't help a whole lot with all the tape and stuff that I used to. How's my video doing? I haven't checked, I haven't checked the stats on it ever since I've been live. I kept refreshing it yesterday. It was doing really good yesterday. It was nice to see. There's one side, let's go to the other. No, the, oh, I mean the, uh, the video that I posted, the one of the windshield. I was wondering how many views it's up to right now. Because I think I think I've been in the game long enough where I'm finally starting to understand what I need to do to make things work. But it's taken a long time to kind of get here. <laughs> like, cause the unfortunate bit is live streams just don't do as well as a video does. But I enjoy doing them more, so live streams for sure. I'm gonna go back down here. And yeah, it's like, it make you know, it's straight to the point, shows you what you need to know. It's just a matter of getting the right footage for it and putting it all together. But I have this problem where when I go to record a video, I don't know what I'm gonna say so then I, I try and record something and I mess it up 50 times and then I got all this garbled footage that I have to like try and sift through to like edit any type of a coherent thought 
and I haven't been good with scripting anything either. I, I tried to follow a script before, and it was just, I was terrible at it. So, I don't know, the last handful of videos that I've posted, I've just like, okay, let me get all the footage. And then I'm like, I guess I'll just kind of voice over it and try and make it as good of a video as I can off of that. And the numbers, the numbers show. They're, it's like, it's, it's okay enough. It's not quite a full blown video, but it, for all the, that little like important stuff that's good to know, that's what they're there for. Either that or it's lost somewhere in a four hour live stream. <laughs> yep, Honda Fit, straightforward, but a lot of glass. <laughs> I know what you mean. They're tall windows, man. There's just a lot of big glass on such a little car. Bigger glass than most cars. Most... SUVs too, actually. Is there an easy alternative for glass aid? No, the best you can do is like double up on some pinstriping around the whole window. Like you're narrating for the videos. Thanks. I hear my voice and I'm like, ew. <laughs> I actually, so I've been, I've been editing videos for like a long time, but I edit the way that I edit because that's the way I kind of like taught myself how to edit. And I always feel like I have to over explain so many things. And when I jumped over to making some TikTok videos, I was just trying to pay attention a lot more to like how people were putting videos together. And you can leave so much out in a video for whatever point it is you're trying to make. So like, I, you know, I'd have clean off the glass, right? So I'd clean both sides of the glass. And it's like, well, people understand context. So I would just show, kind of speed up that it happened, speed it up and only show that it happened on one side of the window or like just show like this side's clean, that side I'm scrubbing and I'm scraping off so you, then you understood what happened on that side. Like little things like that. I mean, it sounds, it might sound obvious, but I just didn't understand, <laughs> I just wouldn't edit that way. And now with these last videos, it's like, I don't know, I've been cutting out, um, like get, trying to just get straight to the point with some of them. Maybe a little too much with some of them. But it's, uh, it's been going good. Oh yeah, I have a stick over there. Let me grab that. Pinstriping? Yeah, so um, glass aid is 10 mils thick, so there's no like thin, thick tapes, if that makes sense. Like there's no quarter inch wide thick tapes. So, but there is like pinstriping. So if you wanna put something on the glass that helps protect the, the window while you're cutting, you need something that's a little bit more robust. 
Um, you could double up on some pinstriping, and that'll at least help. Still probably going to be a little thin. But it'll create a line, too. You can also do a Sharpie and cut it on the glass board. It's just something. I just don't like cutting on the glass much anymore. I do it occasionally, but I try and keep blades off as much as possible now. Glass is too sensitive. Okay. So we're trying to keep this down. All these little wrinkles and stuff, they create little hang up spots for the roll to get stuck on. So that's why I like a towel to lay as flat as I possibly can. That's why the rope just isn't quite wide enough or like it's the rope is just a little bit too wide so i couldn't put both the towel i couldn't put a towel and uh and a rope in this one at the same time it's kind of been the trend with a few of them lately but these are very dense towels so they absorb a lot more water than like a thin thinner like beach towel or something Yes, that's looking pretty good. I like that. Keep everything safe. I'm not really worried on something like this, but you know, I'm not gonna do anything stupid, so. There was glue on that side. Thank you to whoever reminded me about that earlier. So. Is there a cheap and good glass scrubbing pad? Well, there's the triage ones. Um, that has the nice pad behind it, which I really like. Um, you can get these Scotch-Brite ones. Don't use anything ultra cheap, though. Um, use something that is glass safe, because when you're skimping out too much, sometimes like if you just get a scrub pad, you'll scratch the hell out of glass. I would just always use something that I knew was going to be safe. So you can do little tests on like your own car. Go get some like different scrubbies and then try it, but I don't know of anything else other than that. I can appreciate trying to save some money, but scrub pads really aren't expensive anyways. Do you talk financials? Sure. I guess it just kind of depends on what. <laughs> I've been pretty transparent about probably way more than I should here. But people have questions, like, for the most part, I'll answer whatever. What would be a good gross monthly before going to a shop? <sighs> and whatever supports yourself. Whatever, like, it's kind of a tough question to answer because, like, there isn't an exact number. It's just whatever, like, like honestly, whatever you can get by on. Um, and then know that the opportunity that you're moving into has a big upside to it. So enough to get you going, and then before you know it, you'll probably get to somewhere where you want to be. You might have to live a little bit more frugally, but when you're doing what you love to do, like, and it can support itself enough, like, 
then the rest of it is just like happiness on top of it. So I don't have a good number for you, but that's kind of what I would go by. Like if I was working somewhere and I was making good money, but I was really unhappy working there, that only lasts, to me that only lasts so long. Because when you're making money enough to like support everything that you want to do, you just have to like suck it up and go to work to to like continue that. Like then you notice way more how much like you hate your job <laughs> or what you do. So it's a little bit of perspective too. If you love going to work and love doing what you do, it's way different. All right, let's clean this off. It's all scraped. It's pretty good. Um, this is your first year in business. Um, first year, best year at this point. I hear people make just one or make a hundred k just tinting. Yeah, I was. But you're not just gonna start, you don't, you don't necessarily just start tinting and then make that. It's not an easy field to just get into and start making money. Um, you can make good money off the of cars that you do, but there still is competition. There's still building up a reputation. There still is learning how to do everything. So it's got, Enormous opportunities, but it is a challenge to figure out for yourself. And everybody's path is going to be a little bit different because window tinting comes from like a very mechanical automotive background, really, where, where like it was considered like a weird ghetto thing to do like getting your car tinted and now it's like now there's nice light ceramic films that like everybody gets their car tinted in or not everybody gets in ceramic but like there's nice light ceramics and now it's like a ooh that car doesn't have tint it's weird or yeah I got my car tinted in, in clear ceramic like it's so much more normal now so there's a lot of different opportunities with it Whereas with like, you know, an hourly career field, you, you can't just like flip a switch and start making more money. You can't just like bring in extra work and make more money. You have to like get another job at a different company and get a promotion or something. That kind of happens with, uh, work with a lot of markets, though. Figure out how to make good money. Other people see the opportunities. Other people jump on it. Things start to change a little bit. I work at a... What? At a lame hardware, oh, I work at a lame hardware store. Sorry, I'm looking through tinted windows. <laughs> gotcha. Well, yeah, so there's a lot more opportunity because you're going from um, a regular hourly job to like a skilled trade. So like there's a lot of different skilled trades out there. You can be an electrician, you can be a plumber. <laughs> you, like there's so many different things that you can be that'll pay more than just working a job. So figuring out what that is and how much effort and whatever you wanna do, you can make good money doing a lot of, a lot of skilled trades. 
just figuring out what you want to jump into. But they're skilled trades for a reason. They, they with window tinting, there's there's really no set path. There's not enough of any type of established thing. Not like some, I don't know, what are their plumbing certifications probably? <laughs> I don't even know. You know what, I'm gonna do this one more time. I'm just gonna spray this whole thing. And then we're gonna speed you out one more time. Nervous. So just like in the video, peel one quarter, peel the next quarter, pull it about halfway, lightly spray the film off. Hop on over to the other side. This is the sque squeegee that I was using. This is like a big wide Libman one. It's really flat. It's good for big surface areas. It's been very, very handy. I like it a lot. So I like to squeegee any of the dust off of it. You can never find a Libman squeegee at Walmart. Menards or Amazon, actually. You can get two of them on Amazon for like 20 bucks. But yeah, it's hit or miss. Sometimes I find it and sometimes they're all sold out. So when I see them, um, I eat, last time I saw them, I picked up like six of them. There we go. Ugh. Spray that. Let's roll it back up. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's just that sometimes it clings so well. You have to use a tool to get it off. Seen the green Libman at Menards. Menards is kind of amazing. It's a store that I never have enough time to walk around in for very long. It's like Harbor Freight. I could spend a long time there, but I kind of wish I always had a reason to go there. Like when I'm here, I'm like, oh, this would be helpful. That would be helpful. And I forget to write it down. And then I go to like, Harbor Freight or something, and I'm like, oh, there's so many helpful things. I don't know what I need. What's this? What's that? What's a Menards? <laughs> uh. 
It's an amazingly big um, hardware home store. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. The amount of, like, re yeah, repeat. Yeah, it... As long as you go into it with the understanding of, like, there's this ever-rotating amount of new people that are always finding the channel, and then some people hang around for a long time, and but there's always, like, this rotation where... Today is the first day somebody saw the channel, so they're going to have like a million and a half questions. Um, it helps me try and figure out what videos to make, and it always... Mostly, talking to new people helps me to figure out what people want to see and what to make, so... Because I can sit here and rattle off 50 little window tinting terms, and then somebody's like, AI, hey, I don't know what you just said. Oh, that was a little scary. Oh, that worked out well then. Big cutout. Oh, no, really? <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> Cannon. How many times does it do that? It does that so many times. I don't even think I got much battery left. I, I probably do on one of these things. I have no idea which one now. Low disk space. Oh, that's a scary thing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's pick it up. Oh, what? There's another fucking that one, too. Both? Almost looks like it was done at the same time. I thought the GoPro was still good. Probably not. There's that. Wait, wait, wait. All right, there we go. Make sure we're all lined up. So the, uh, Whew. fun. Sorry, I'm just paying real close attention to what I'm doing. 
I'm assuming a battery's gonna die again. I had everything on the chargers, but we took a really long time on the doors. And, uh, yeah, that, uh, translated into <laughs> dead batteries. I'm gonna get into PPF videos. Let's get started. Take your phone, start making videos. YouTube, how to make a YouTube video. Find some people's styles that you like. And then just, you know, it's helpful to start doing what they're doing. You're never gonna be able to replicate it entirely, but it's not a way to start. Or not a bad way to start. Find a little thing here. Let me see. Ooh, ooh, I felt it. If you want to do like the live streaming setup. Um, I do have a video that breaks down what I'm using. There is no way I can teach another person how to do that. <laughs> do a lot of research. Um, but all the stuff that I use, uh, there is a video and you can you can buy it. It's relatively simple to, to set up. Understanding live streaming and everything that comes along with it, that's where things get really complicated, but there's so many channels that explain everything about live streaming, so. Not live stream? Yeah, then just start looking up how to make YouTube videos. That's how I look, that's how I learn about all this stuff. My piece of advice for a lot of people is, you can do so much off of your phone. Video doesn't matter. Video quality doesn't matter as much as audio quality. Um, so you can actually buy like a Rode wireless mic um, or like actually there's a whole bunch of like cheap, cheaper wireless mics now that you can hook up right to your phone. But the last videos that I made, they were like, they were all shot on a point and shoot camera. I had a secondary angle from my phone, dumped all the footage onto my phone, edited everything on my phone. Um, if you wanna use music, use something uh, like Epidemic Sound. They're a monthly subscription that you can pay for royalty-free music. You can also use something called Stream Beats. There's a, there's a few royalty-free options out there, but don't just YouTube, like, royalty-free music. Like, most of that shit ends up getting flagged eventually. Music is overrated anyways. <laughs> Music is distracting. No, not really. If you have music playing in the background, it's gonna get picked up. There was the neighbors uh, when they were redoing, they had like some of, some just like, I don't know, some random fiesta music that got my videos flagged and it was like muffled through the walls. Still got flagged. So there's a lot better options out there for music now, but everybody wants to be a Peter McKinnon. <laughs> it just, it's not as interesting as what it used to be. But then I see some people like, uh, like the detail geek and they'll put music in the background and just like time lapse and stuff. So. I mean, it can be like complimentary, but it's kind of overrated. Transitions are overrated. <laughs> There's so much, so many parts of YouTube that's like, production quality is like 10% of your video. It's so small. Thumbnail, title, 
and having something interesting to bring uh, to a video. That's a video. Everything else is like, whatever. It's easy to get, I just bring it up because it's easy to overthink all of that. I used to, I used to want, I used to spend like two hours on like a little fancy transition. And uh, that did not fix my videos. You know what's crazy? The way to look at making a video is title first. Title and thumbnail first, then make your video around it. Most people, including me, think backwards. I think, oh, that would be a good video. And then I make the video and I go, what do I call it? And then the video doesn't do well. Because there was never anything interesting or no big hook that you had in mind when you made that video. So my reverse rolling windshield, there was not reverse rolling anywhere in that title. It was really challenging for me to think of a name for it, but I did think of one that actually was pretty good. Ever use the Conqueror? Yeah, Conqueror is great. I just, with the Triad, I don't hardly use it anymore. It's helpful. I have them, but I don't need them anymore. It's like one. Is this a little piece of dust in my phone? What is that? I think there's like a small, yeah. Micro piece of dust. It's raw. It's, I think we can get it. Gonna gleefully scream yet. I'm really looking for it. <laughs> Have you ever found a small speck on a windshield, had to fix it, and then start over? Oh, for sure. That's how I got better at fixing them. So it's not always a, like a consistent thing, um, but yeah, there's uh nice. I think that's good. Actually, I see something now. Oh, there it is. Okay. I see what we're doing. It's a little different. Where is it? Oh, this is so frustrating. So when you try and fix a spot, it's real small, and then you can't hardly see it. But should be good. Do you have any tattoos? No. Um, yeah, that's a little, sorry, just trying to make sure. There it is.
No, I actually don't. Thought about it. Wanted to. Never could figure out what to do. So I never got one. <laughs> Sweet! Looks good. Yeah, little, little touch-up spots and... Uh, or like when you have like a hair or something in a windshield, little dust thing, it's really hard to see and take care of. There we go. Looks good. Don't, you'll regret it. <laughs> I had a really busy weekend of ceramic and then I got my tinner tattoo. Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think if I got the right thing, I'd, I'd like it. People said when I got a man, like it was really funny when I got a manual car as like my first car. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like this, and I did. I never regretted getting a manual car. It was a lot of fun to always drive, and it's like, why would you want to work while well, you drive? It's just manual cars are fun, so I really liked it. Tattoo. I think if I think of the right thing. I'll get one. But I don't know what to get. I can appreciate good design though. So I think rather than just getting like one tattoo blankly on your arm, it's always good to have like some sort of design that fits in. Oh my God. Almost 30, I'm getting my first one shop logo. Nice, that's super cool. Just making sure this is all cleaned off. I had a manual transmission on most of my cars growing up. Oh, this seems stuttery too, hang on. There, that probably helps. They're hard to sell because most people drive automatics. <laughs> True. Yeah, most people don't drive manual cars. There's so much fun. Yeah, they're just, they still make them. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're kind of rare to find. So especially now when you're, uh, when you're looking around for a car, it's just kind of hard to find anything that you want to get, you have to go a lot farther typically to get it. So if you want it in a manual version, good luck. Everything is so in demand right now. All right, let's put that there. Let's get this cleaned up. I think we're, we just got a little bit of touch up to do, but we're pretty much at the end here. Everything turned out really, really nice. <laughs> what a day. Put 
this back on. What time is it? Three o'clock? <laughs> this is like a seven. Oh, no. It's about a four hour stream still. I didn't think we started until like a little bit later. I think these doors have had a good amount of time to dry at this point. You know any Dutch words? No. I took German in high school though, but I forgot everything. But they would call that Deutsch. Sprechen <laughs> Sie Deutsch. That's about as much as I know. What do you think about the tinning kits? Uh, for headlights and taillights? Uh, if you get anything, get a Lux. Get a Lux kit if they sell them. If not, you'd be better off just using a bulk film. If they're simple, then they're not that hard. <laughs> if they're simple, they're not hard to do. What I mean by that, okay. So if it's just like a pretty smooth curve, then there's not much to do. So the, by contrast, it's like really easy to tint a, a headlight or a taillight. So like this one, it's got a nice smooth curve. Um, and where it gets difficult is when it wraps around and becomes a compound curve. But this is all kind of flat in here. It's not all rigid and stuff. Um, same thing with this. You'd stretch it a little bit. Um, this curve becomes a little bit more difficult but not too bad. It's where you have the like ultra exaggerated sharp points and stuff and lots of like dimples inside of a, a curve. That's when it gets really crazy. Okay, so we gotta put his wiper back on. Full windshield tint, I love it. I just did it on this one. It's awesome. go. Wipers back on. Yeah, the more windshields, the better. That little thing popped up again. Just one little guy right here. Just needs to dry out. <laughs> the the robot voice doesn't do a good job with the international. It sounds like an American just reading it out loud. So not good. <laughs> that scared me. What an adventure. This looks really good. I'd say I'm pretty happy with it. See, I didn't, it comes across really weird, so I have to read it. It 
muck something. I don't know. Is that a way to get demonetized in German? This looks good. I mean, at this point, I would hope so. I can't even, hey, yeah, <laughs> I can't even, I heard it pronounced, well, I, I kind of heard it on my headset, I, I can't even hope to read that back. There we go, yeah, man. Let's take this key out. Windshield all set. Woo! Looks pretty damn good. So that's 50, 20, actually 20. Uh, 50 over the factory on the rear, and then 50 on the back. Nice. Very clean. What a day. <laughs> I was like, oh, I just have one appointment. <laughs> Cannon. Cannon. There we go. But man, this bed turned into a, uh, a project. So definitely got to double check the rolls. There was quite a few Super Chats today, so thank you. It always helps. Uh, sometimes I, I feel like I backslide, where like things are going really well, and then I take like five steps back with just the sheer amount of mistakes that happen. But that happens when you're tinting. Let me see. I want to see how this video is doing real quick. And then I'll shout out some super chats. So this is the last video that we posted. I'm going to refresh this because I have no idea. This is really cool. The new videos have been actually getting more subscribers. Sometimes when I post a video, I would lose subscribers instead. Oh, there it goes. I lost subscribers. <laughs> Fair enough. Ah, 6,500. All right, it's doing, it's, overall it's doing good, but it's dropping off. It's like, it's staying consistent, but it's not picking up a lot of traction. It's kind of picked up a good boost in the beginning. 12 point, see this? This is really telling your click-through rate. So it started off strong. A really strong click-through rate is like 15%. And then 10 is still good, but not that great. And then you can see the more people they show this video to, the more it drops off. And when it starts falling, that's when it's really sad. So by contrast, when we go to um, this one was pretty interesting. You can see it picked up by the thumbnail, it actually picked up a good wave of people. So this was pretty cool. This guy got 100 subscribers too. Made $100 off of that video. Click-through rate. So click-through rate actually stayed relatively low in the beginning and then somehow they found the right audience for it and then it climbed up. So it still was at about 10%, which is a little low, but it ended up doing pretty good. This one was nuts. Best I can figure is the, uh, the click-through rate was just nuts on this one. It like started low and then it bumped up to like damn near 20% and it stayed that way for like a while. That's high. 
and then drop back down after they show it to enough people. So this video ended up doing 800,000 views, but the watch time is lower on a video like this, so it didn't make as much money. Still did great though. 320 subscribers off of that video. So that's been really, really cool to see on some of the stuff where, where they're actually starting to get shown a lot more. The, the views on that windshield video are up over 100. Which one? This one's over almost 800,000. Oh, that, that one with like this Make Shrinking Easy where it was like a pretty lazy voiceover. So it, people would click on it and then click off pretty quickly, um, but it still did. <laughs> it still did way better than I thought it was ever gonna do. Alrighty, so we're gonna shout out some Super Chats. Thank you guys so much uh, for tuning in. Um, big thank you to Ted, Efren, uh, Truck and Stacker, Jeffrey, DC Customs, RGC, Daniel Reyna, RGC, Daniel Reyna, DC Customs. Thank you guys so much for all the support. Really, really appreciate it. Should tin a window with Mountain Dew as a slip solution. I was gonna do one with milk. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with YouTube, but I don't get notifications. I have no idea. Notifications, the bell, and uh, make sure in-app notifications are on on your phone. But other than that, sometimes you can get them as email notifications too. But alrighty, guys, I got to deliver this one. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Next stream is going to be soon. I don't have an exact date, but I like I have stuff like tomorrow and the next day. So if I don't stream tomorrow, it's going to be the next day. <laughs> I just, yeah. This is, Sometimes need to just tint something, but we'll see. So either Thursday or Friday, probably. Saturday for sure. So you guys have a good one. Bye.